Come on through. Aye. Hot spots. Kids. <laughs> this is pretty much the beginning of the book. Adorned in her private school uniform, 12-year-old Natalia Higgins stared out the luxury sedan's window as her mother, Cassia Higgins, weaved in and out of Montego Bay traffic. Just because they say I like girls doesn't make it so. The preteen spoke with a sweet Caribbean twang that interrupted the car ride's deafening silence. Have you seen yourself? Cassia stopped. Her accent was just as thick. Most days you look more like my son than a data. She sucked her teeth. It's not like that, Nate whined as she turned to face her mother. She then removed an ice pack from her mouth, revealing a fat, bloody bottom lip. I hate that school and everyone there, she sulked, remembering the conversation that she just concluded with Nate's school principal. I've told Natalia this a thousand times. Nate's principal continued. Her bandmates would stop teasing her if she simply changed how she dressed and acted a little more, well, normal. By normal, the principal had of course meant girly. Nate shook her head in disgust as her mother's nagging jarred her from the principal's office back to the passenger seat. So obstinate, Cassia rolled her eyes. I just hope our newborn addition don't give as much grief, she said, rubbing her belly. You couldn't tell it by looking at her, but the woman was three months pregnant. Sometimes I feel like some duppy done cursed me. It took no less than three miscarriages, but Cassia finally got pregnant with Nate. After years of high-priced fertility treatments and trying the old-fashioned way, Cassia was again with child. You will be my saving grace, she said, rubbing her belly. Nate stared at her mother's burgeoning baby bump as Cassia accelerated and made a hard right turn. Your father and I hand everything to you on a silver platter. You, you choose to repay us by being a laughing stock? Don't you care what people think? Nate glanced at the speedometer as Cassia clocked in at 20 miles over the legal limit. <laughs> there are places we can send you, Cassia's tone softened, places that will fix you. I not broken, Nate protested emphatically. You know it's a sickness, Natalia. A sickness and a sin. Cassia swerved around an SUV into what would have been oncoming traffic had the road ahead not been clear. You don't understand and you never will, Nate grumbled under her breath. You can be cured. We can correct this, Cassia protested. Why can't I live with auntie? Nate pounded as Cassia grew quietly humiliated that her daughter preferred the company of her sister-in-law. You must be mad, Cassia said, cutting her eyes at Nate. She then veered around a slow truck, only this time she ran, boom, directly into an oncoming passenger van. Moments later, the mangled sedan led head over heels in a nearby ditch, spewing flames and exhaust into the baby blue sky. Mom, Nate screamed for Cassia, who had already unbuckled her seatbelt and slid out the car. The last thing Nate remembered was begging Cassia for help. Although battered and bruised, Cassia made absolutely no effort to save her firstborn from the smoldering wrong side up vehicle. When Nate awoke in the hospital, her thighs were bandaged due to the second degree burn she'd endured. And Auntie Erlen was by her side to deliver the heart-wrenching news. She lost the baby, Natty. Auntie Erlen gently caressed her heavy body atop Nate's as they grieved the life of a child they never knew. He's with the angels now. Thank you. That's the beginning. That's the beginning of Boom Boom Rock. Thank you, thank you, thank you.